And Fiji against Canada. Nervous tension, always the opening game, the players will tell you, is the hardest. The one before they settle and little mistakes can make problems as Davu goes for it first. But Canada have won back their own uh, start kick and it's O'Malley down the line to Tony Lacarte. And this is Moonlight. Watch out for him, the key strike force in the Canadian lineup. Good possession again from Phil Mack now. And there's a penalty immediately for Canada. Good start by them. And an early score really would boost their morale against the seemingly at times invincible. That's an error. An error, the knock on by Tony Lacarte. Advantage being played. And now the first real threat. This is Serevi, first hands of this tournament from him. Fed on by Volavola. Vola. And then here's Bolavuthu. Bolavuthu has real pace, too much pace. And the little flyer has gone again. The 25 year old from La Mai Viti in Suva, Filimoni Bolavuthu. That's his 15th try of the season, his 47th overall. And, well, give him half a yard. You could give him a mile. Look at the little step inside. Fit, fast, and not even Dave Moonlight could uh, get close. An extra special player and certainly one of my uh, contenders for player of the season is Philomoni Bolabuthu. He scored seven tries in the last tournament in Singapore. He scored four tries in Hong Kong. And exceptional talent from the restart then. Back into the hands of Vola Vola by Serevi now. Great distributor of the ball. Not quite the edge of pace he used to have, but still a lot of tricks. And uh, here's Naivo. Powerful running, but good scrambling defence by Canada. They should have retained it. They have got it. But there's offside in the end. Player in front of the ball, Akio Tyler. And so quickly into the hands of uh, Serevi once more. On the burst through the middle. Could see it coming, couldn't you? Naomi Nanuku. It's all about the pace of the take of the ball, the angle which Nanuku took up. The former farmer from Nandroga, one of the senior players in the squad at 30. And, well, at times they make it look so easy. It was just the timing of the pass. And Nanuku for try number two. Well, those early promising moments for Canada. Long gone now, and no points from it. Retained, though, by Richard O'Malley. O'Malley from uh, the famous Castaway Wanderers Club. First real handling movement by Canada. This is Lacarte, another from that uh, Vancouver club. This is Moonlight. Nice break. Oh, well, I thought he was through. Clung to, caught from behind, but ball retained. Now Canada, that's nice interplay. Good lead on to Phil Mack. Phil Mack. Has to release it quickly. But Fiji had got themselves on the wrong side, came into the ruck from the wrong side. It's Mack again. Principal playmaker, a lot of promise. Christoph Strubin. Desperately need a score now. And they have it, just retained by uh, Richard O'Malley, who's been uh, ever-present this season for Canada. And again, Fiji just edging the way offside and, uh, well, in a hurry was Dave Moonlight. And it's a knock-on at the tap penalty. Frustrating moment. About two and a half minutes remain of this first period. Serevi just uh, flips it away, relies on the men with the, the midfield break, but uh, not that time. It's a good pick up and the sprint. And all the way from that same outstanding runner, 
Filamoni Bolavusu. Well, once he'd seen the gap, there was no doubt as to the outcome. And Bolavusu. It's a very determined uh, Fiji. Problems for Shane Thompson there, the amiable Canada coach, but clearly thus far outclassed are uh, the Canucks of Canada. Kick successful, 21-0. Three converted tries to nil. This was the third, the second for Bolavuthu. But a very determined side. They've got their sights on the overall IRB Sevens crown this season. They lead England by 10 points. So obviously a tournament win here would virtually uh, wrap it up. They'd have to lose in an early round next week in London for England to dethrone them by any measure. Very determined, and that 10-point buffer over England gives them the big advantage. Here's Sarevi weaving his magic. Nankalavuki setting it up in front of the post in the 22. Danger again, Sarevi sees a half gap. Oh, look at that. And didn't bother to put, score it himself, just offloaded to Nanuku. Well, Sarevi was almost over the line when he chose to pass it in the end. Watch this. Lovely little shimmy, little show of the ball. There's the break, there's the line. <laughs> but he thought, I'll just switch it, keep the practice going almost. And Nanuku, his second try, the conversion by him as well. And we're up to 28 nil. And we're still a few seconds left in this first half time. The hunting horn sounds, that's the hooter or the equivalent here in Paris, and a consummate first half performance. Four tries, two apiece, to Nanuku and Bolavuthu. And Canada without any answers to the magicians from the South Sea Islands. Jopé Tuakabe, look at the overall record there, 327 ties, win ratio 77%, and that includes a period of three years which were pretty lean and barren years by Fijian standards, but no more, they turned things round of late with a vengeance, back to those years when they and New Zealand were completely dominant in the world of sevens before it became this multi national global sport that it now is involving over a hundred nations of real sevens enthusiasts and small wonder when you see teams like Fiji provide such spectacular entertainment the skills the fitness levels quite remarkable and of course tournaments that always produce tremendous excitement and Happily, occasional shocks and upsets that just add to the delight of the spectators and the thrills of this wonderful sport. 37 years, but uh, like a teenager in terms of performance. By Sali Sarevi to start the second half and just watch the accuracy of his restart kicks right onto the 10 metre line of the opposition to allow his players time to get there and tap it back like that. Sarevi to tidy up. Fiji looking confident. Good tackle though coming in that time. I think it was Kyle Haley who got uh, his man and wins the ball because of by virtue of the kick, uh, the ball thrown forward. Philip Mack, the new young playmaker, just 21 from the James Bay Club. He really took over the role of Jesse Frender, who was very much in that uh, position pr pr previously. That's uh, the offload via Dave Moonlight. 
one of the players from the UVic, University of Victoria, which is very much a hotbed of rugby and of sevens rugby. But the little mistakes like the handling error then. Ball went backwards though, so no knock on. Can they stage some sort of a fight back here? Chris Drubin. Again, it's the pace of the Fijians. They seem to cover every break, but they're lying over the man after the tackle. So Canada penalty passed on by Chris Drubin. This is Moonlight again. Nice little step inside. Now he's got a man outside. Can he get the feed away? He couldn't find O'Malley, but the support is still good with Strubin. Within five metres now, try here would... Oh, that would boost their morale enormously. Akio Tyler goes back. Just got to keep cool heads here. And there's a lost possession with the ball knocked forward. And I think it was Strubin finally desperate to try and make something up the short side. Let's see what happened here. Initially lost, repossessed, but knocked on in the process. On comes Jamie Collins. Powerful man, this... Uh, Building worker who comes into the hooking position. Another from the James Bay Club, Jamie Collins. And Fiji ring the changes too. You're allowed to bring on replacements any time from your squad of 12. You can bring on three at any given time. And Tonawai has come on. One of the newer players. Revels in the wonderful name of Ratu Dali Tangimanalevu. Meanwhile, what a run, Numbuliwaka. Lovely pick up too by uh, Sareki who's just come on, the new man. Here's Sarevi wide, Naivo to his left. The man mountain and what pace he has too, but good tackle, took two men to bring him down. Creates the overlaps out wide. This is Tonawai, Sarevi knows the men are out there, three of them, but the error this time by Nanuku. Luckily for him, went backwards. But away, and in the end, unstoppable. So, first try of the second half. And the first try ever in IRB 7s for Arisi Sareki. Well, he's a player who's come through into the squad because uh, apparently, according to Sarevi, has just been outstanding in training. And he marks his debut with this fine run on the outside. Another man with pace, yet another. And Sareki makes it try number five. Lovely offload, wasn't it? Straightforward enough. So the last quarter of this tie to be played out. Nambuliwaka on the field, replacement, Nanuku wide via Sareki. And trying to give the whole squad a run here, I think. But Sarevi staying on to uh, mastermind affairs, as he likes to do. Of course, no Dan Avuthu, no uh, William Ryder to rotate with him. Ryder very much his replacement. But... Uh, well, didn't do as he was bidden in uh, Fiji in the build-up to this tournament and did not attend the training sessions that he was required to not long after his wedding day. But rules is rules. And uh, so he was left behind as a measure of discipline. Canada still looking for a first score in this tie. Well, they were much closer last time they met in Wellington. It was 28-14 earlier this season, back in March. But this time, well, you can see the determination. Fiji absolutely... Oh, what about that for getting out of a tackle? Just uh, all those little sh shimmies and dummies and eventually Nambuluaka has... Well, mesmerised Moonlight initially in Canada in general. <laughs> That's outrageous.
So the young man from Red Rock, look at all this. <laughs> and then the audacity to sort of duck underneath. The 25 year old knew this season first tournament was in Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, with a touch of arrogance almost there. This is only his fourth tournament. That was his fourth try. Just over a minute to play in this opening round. Well, Fiji throwing the gauntlet down, letting them, the rest of the world know what they've got to face. Oh, and then the luck of the bounce. Well, when you're on song, when things are going your way, and when you're a new man, it's exciting. As Sareki makes it his second on his first appearance. Well, just capitalizing on the Canada's misfortune. Well, they're not short of pace, are they? And that was the error. And then the luck of the bounce as the ball flew up back into his arm, so no knock on. And there's another who looks uh, out of the same mould. Orisi Sareki and Nanuku. Just about to round it off here, about 10 seconds to play. No so there, the hunting horn sounds the end of the tie. The early morning Fijian supporters wave their flags. Not much wrong with that performance. And Fiji consummate winners over Canada. 45 points to nil. Smiles all round. Not of arrogance, but of, yeah, not a bad start, says Serevi and coach Yope Tuikabi. Fiji 45, Canada nil. Now for the other two teams in Pool A. And Tunisia. Fiji in the unfamiliar blue shirts. It's still easily recognizable though. Very strong uh, Fijian side, but Waisale Sarevi on this occasion on the bench. Naomi Nanuku. He scored 22 points in the opening match against uh, Canada. Filimoni and Bolabusu, Nangele Buki, Nabuliwanga were also amongst the try scorers. Tunisia, unfamiliar names, but uh, a few of the uh, squad members play their rugby in the lower divisions here in France, and they're coached by Mohamed Sarrawi himself, a, a former Sevens exponent. The referee from France is uh, Monsieur Jean-Luc Reboyal. Fiji get the game underway, and they claim the uh, possession from the kickoff. Spreading it wide uh, quickly to uh, Naomi Nanuku wearing 10. Huge Sereli Nangelevuki is back in the squad following the, an injury, serious injury to uh, the Peli and Dranivasa in the Hong Kong Sevens. Dranivasa broke his arm in the uh, in competition. So Fiji looking to get their first score and it comes courtesy of uh, Lepani Nabuliwanga scored a try against uh, Canada that's his second try in uh, Paris came from the pressure at the breakdown a huge gap open up for Lepani Nepaliwanga Stroll over. Conversion is missed, but it's uh, first blood then to the Fijians. And it's very strange to see them uh, play in any other shirt except white. Then again, perhaps these shirts were white at one stage. But uh, such are the fortunes of the Fijians these days. They can afford three sets of jerseys. Also, I'm told. Simisi Naivo. Couldn't quite secure possession for Fiji. An opportunity now then for Tunisia. Most uh, Tunisian clubs are based around the capital, uh, Tunis. They've been in 
training camp for many weeks now. Good defensive work here by the Fijians. So confident, the world champions. Big Simisi Naivo plays his rugby out in uh, Japan. Good pressure being applied here by uh, Tunisia, and in particular by Kais Issa, who played actually with uh, Moisale Serevi in uh, mont de marsan in France a few seasons ago. Fiji retain possession inside their own 22. Sereli Nangelevuki, he wears eight. There's the try scorer, Nabuliwanga, turning his uh, man inside and out. And it's a second try then for Fiji. Filimune Mbolavuthu. Third try, two tries against uh, Canada. First match of the day here at the stand, uh, Charlety. Great speed and great sidestep has uh, Mbolavuthu. Just a, a hint of that speed, a change of pace, taking him away from the defender. But it was created for him though by uh, Nabuli Wanga. So midway through the first half, the Fiji lead Tunisia by 12 points to nil. Tunisia lost uh, to Australia by 21 points to 14. They scored uh, two tries against the Australians. So they won't be overawed certainly by uh, the Fijians. Good pressure again from the Islanders in the scrimmage area. And they'll get the put in, having uh, out-muscled the uh, Tunisians on that occasion. <laughs> Sabri Gamir thinking, well, it's, it's our put-in. No, it isn't. So Fiji on the Tunisia 10-metre line. The Tunisians transgressing. The Puliwanga. Lost forward by the Fijians, so it's advantage Tunisia now. They've got some speedsters in their side. There's one of them. Mahmoud Kadraoui, he's a, a newcomer to the squad. Now that they've got men over here. Kais Issa leaves it uh, for Khaled Zegden. And Tunisia making heavy weather of this. They certainly had the, uh, the advantage in terms of personnel. That's better. Kais Issa now then. Options left and right here. Oh, the pass needed to come quicker than that. And uh, Fiji, here they come. Mbolavuthu, full of tricks, isn't he? But leaves it for Simisi Naivo, member of the uh, Rugby World Cup winning squad in Hong Kong. Last season, very viable player at the restarts is uh, Simisi Naivo. You can easily see why with that height. Oh, a change of pace again from Neu Minanuku, again turning the defender inside and out. Uh, Majidi Girat just uh, managed to uh, grab a handful of shirt, but that was about it. And Fiji. Claim their third try with a minute and a half remaining of uh, the first half. Yeah, sucking in the defenders, creating space. That's what Sands is all about. Uh, exceptional skills. From Naomi Nanuku, the uh, Nandroga farmer, showed up well in, uh, in Wellington and uh, Los Angeles uh, earlier on this uh, season. Sabri Gamir wasn't going anywhere really, was he? And that's something you don't do in sevens, is kick away hard-earned possession. Laisia Satora, a newcomer to the... Uh, Fijian 7 squad this season. This only his third tournament after Hong Kong and Singapore. So Jean-Luc Rebroil calling them back for the 
penalty. Isa. He's their playmaker as the uh, the hooter, the horn, call it what he will, blows for half time. This will be the last piece of action, the last opportunity for Tunisia to get a score. Looking around for support was uh, Gemir Girat in full flight. But, uh, plenty of Fijian defenders back there, and they could well claim a score now before half time. But no, says referee. Uh, Reboyal, the pass was forward. <laughs> it was a huge Samishi Naivo using his uh, height to good effect, his reach rather, to prevent Tunisia from uh, claiming a score which would have given them hope. But it's uh, three tries to nil at the break in uh, Fiji's favour. So they've already scored uh, 10 tries in uh, this tournament, 7 against Canada. And a hat-trick of tries uh, against Tunisia in the opening 7 minutes of this uh, Pool A clash. Uh, Tunisia's playing record they've won 9 drawn 1 lost to 25 and their most famous victory no doubt was that against uh, South Africa in the uh, pool stages of the Rugby World Cup in uh, Hong Kong last season that certainly uh, raised a few eyebrows on the international stage so they're quite capable of uh, overcoming the odds uh, the Tunisians It's a big ask though on the uh, North African nation up against the world champions. 19 points to nil, they trail at the break. They met on two previous occasions. They met uh, last December in Dubai. Fiji won by 31 points to five. They met here incidentally in Paris 12 months ago. Uh, Fiji won by 24 points to seven. So 19 points the difference at the top of the second half. And here come Fiji looking for their opening score this second period. Brilliant individual effort here from Filimon Mbola. Uh, sorry, it's Sereleri Nangelevuki. And he gets his reward. Fourth season now. Sir Ali Nangelevuki is also captained uh, Fiji on the rare occasion. That's his first uh, try in the Paris Sounds. He had to work hard for it. That's a fourth try then for the, the Islanders. Fiji. Well, they top the IRB series uh, this year. They have an advantage of 10 points over England. It's not impossible for them to secure the uh, IRB series for the first time ever. We've certainly played some scintillating rugby this season, have the Fijians. Coached by Wesale Sarevi and uh, here by uh, Joppe Tuinkambe, himself a former player. That's the try scorer Sireli Nangelevuki, looks for support. Plenty of options. Mbolawanga. Again to Mbolavuthu. So dangerous is Mbolavuthu. A slight breakdown in uh, communication there. Lofty Nino. He wears five for Tunisia. Very experienced player. Sabri Gemir. And at last, Tunisia will surely get on the scoreboard. Or will they? Back there, Simisi Naivo. Wow, what on earth was all that about? Was it grounded? It'll be up to the uh, touch and goal judge to determine. No, it's a restart from the 22. Let's have another look at that. Gamir, well, again <laughs> to Semisi Naivo. That's two certain tries is saved now. Oh, brilliant skills by Semisi Naivo. Watch the right arm. Oh. <laughs> well, 
knocked it out of uh, Gimiev's hand and as ever that's what happens Tunisia thinking they were going to score down one end of the park only to turn around and uh, find Filimoni and Balabuthu dotting it down under the sticks in their own in goal area wow tragedy for Tunisia but uh, it's all about winning it's all about racking up the points at the pool stages and well, that's uh, Mbolavuthu's reward. He is being replaced. So Samichi Naivo recalled uh, to the Fijian 7 squad. <laughs> you can easily see why. And he'll certainly need those defensive skills against uh, the likes of South Africa, England, New Zealand in the latter stages of uh, competition. So comfortable lead then for... Fiji midway through the second half, 33 points to nil. But it could have been 27-5 or 27-7. So the Tunisians, well, they'll be heartbroken. But in all honesty, Sabri Gemir should have done better. Uh, Fijians are keeping the... Uh, Scorekeeper busy, aren't they? Nasoni Rocco, another player recalled. Downey Vuthu, the captain, is under suspension following uh, the Hong Kong Sevens. But uh, Waisale Saravi, plenty of uh, players to call upon. And this young man was certainly. Uh, Looked as the, the next uh, Saravi at one stage. Looked as if he was going to become their playmaker, but uh, he certainly missed out on selection uh, over the last uh, season, a season and a half or so. But he certainly hasn't lost the pace. It's a half decent attempt uh, at a conversion from Naomi Nanuku. But the conversion is missed. It's a, a healthy and a commanding lead then for Fiji. 38 points to nil they now lead six tries three in the first half three in the second and we've still got some two minutes remaining of this uh, pool a clash fiji and uh, australia that'll be the big clash of the day for uh, the world of champions waisale serevi the incomparable waisale serevi just nudged forward there Masala Saravi, well, he's certainly instilled some uh, discipline into the Fijian side. And what a marvellous record he has. 37 years old, best sevens player ever, probably. No one would uh, deny him that accolade, certainly. Mahmoud Kadrawi, wearing Levin with a kick. Kindly bounce uh, for the master. Fiji now have the width of the park. That's uh, Misake and Davu, yet another player who's been recalled. Let's see Asatora take that, he says to the Tunisian defender. He's over. They've got pace, they've got guile, but they've also got strength. Useful guy to have, isn't he? Let's see Asatora, 26 year old. Plays his sevens for the uh, Wunda Kings. Flanker in 15s. And Fiji are out over the 40 point mark. Seven tries. They scored seven against uh, Canada in the opening encounter. Now then. Uh, pull that to the right of the upright. So with less than uh, 30 seconds remaining. Fiji still keep uh, a clean score sheet as we reprise Lysia Satora an attempt and a try. Forty-three points to nil, forty-five against Canada. That was the top score of the uh, first pool, first round of pool play, and then over forty points once again. 88 points as the Hooter blows 14 tries and Fiji are certainly looking good aren't they as they chase their first ever 
IRB Series Championship. They flattered to deceive on so many occasions, but they've certainly put it together. And uh, this man, Waisale Sarevi, this season, they claimed the Melrose Cup for winning the Rugby World Cup Sevens in Hong Kong. And they're certainly a force to be reckoned with once again in uh, Sevens Rugby. So Ravi well marshalled on that occasion, foot in touch as well, and that's the last piece of action of this uh, pool clash. And the victory greeted by the uh, knowledgeable crowd here at the start, Charlotte. The full-time score, the reads, Fiji 43, Tunisia 0. And Naomi Nanuku. And in case you're wondering, well, no William Ryder. He's uh, been disciplined for not attending training as he should have done and Dan Abuthu obviously is suspended but still a tremendous talent here are Australia then up against it and it's a tough call for them Josh Gamgee their number five will be their key playmaker interestingly they've got the return in this tournament of Julian Huxley who was part of the last Australian IRB Sevens tournament winning side and that believe it or not was back in Brisbane in 2002 but these are the players that Australia have to contend with and it's a long long while since their colours were downed by Australia 12 tournaments in all and the last one was in December 2002 that was the start of, us, of Fiji's winning streak and prior to that Cardiff and Australia won that day in May 2002 but since then it's been one way traffic the men in white then to kick off Fiji with uh, Canadian Phil Smith the referee and the Australia opt to play it as they have entirely the right to do although it didn't go the 10 metres can they get off to a flying start here then now with Luke Milton Luke Milton who's been an ever present for the Wallabies all this season and uh, in that sense very much a cornerstone Michael Black the feed wide and on to Julian Huxley and coming back and here they go down the far touch line and cut inside and there's the start the ideal start Julian Huxley and Australia with the first try of this pool decider and my they worked that well well he's back here back in action from Super 14 Rugby lovely switch of direction there's the playmaker Josh Gamgee he's inspirational at times and knew he had the support of Julian Huxley to set Fiji back on their heels conversion attempt is some way off target and Yope Tuikabi and Dushaya Dawin Nivalu just a little taken aback by this terrific start by Australia could this be their long awaited day well we still got uh, 12 and a half minutes before we'll know that final game for each of these in Pool C both successful over Tunisia and Canada in the build-up there's a knock on though here it'll be Australia's ball well Josh Gamgee is another ever present in the Australian lineup this season came through the ranks of uh, junior rugby league and then the Balmain Tigers scrum half for Australian schools the number five Michael Black in a spot of bother pressure but the ball fly hacked through safely into the hands of Australia again your bride to Huxley nice flip inside and on to Inman strong competitor advantage Australia as a knock-on advantage being played to Michael Black Black skip, skips through the tackle spins it wide and there's a man outside wide Luke Milton desperate Fijian defense here and finally into the hands of uh, Serevi to Naevo and Fiji love the long counter-attack and that's what they're about now inside and outside and on from Nankalavuki on to Vola 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 takes man with him but finally felled by Gamgee up from Tonawai wide from Nankalavuki 
on in turn from Nanuku to Serevi. Serevi, little jink up the middle, weighted pass. Inside, once more with Nankalavuki. Takes two men to nail them at last. Ten metres out from Australia's line. Australia lead 5-0. But could this be the first big hit coming in from Gamji? But in to pick up and score, is it? Vola Vola. Masisi, Vola Vola, his first try of the day. This relative newcomer to the Fijian squad. His first tournament was this season in Wellington. And he's put the scores level. Very physical here in the build-up. That key effort, the drive of Naevo set the ball up for Vola Vola to pounce and score. He did well. It's Serevi then. Serevi, this time off target has allowed Nanuku to uh, take the conversion attempts in the earlier rounds, but Ops himself, well, every reason to take them himself, having scored 431 conversions in his career of seven. Oh, he took a big risk there, it nearly came off. Just knocked on by Luke Milton. Serevi always alert, tremendous vision the man has. But that time, his little uh, quick restart, kick through nearly put Milton away. So there's the all-time points list that uh, shows you the man who played his first Hong Kong Sevens in 1989. Why Sali Serevi is second on the all-time scoring list in IRB Sevens. Serevi pops it up onto Naomi Nanuku. They've got so much pace, even without uh, Ryder and Down Evuthu. But Australia are in this one for real. They are competitive here. Pressure again. Good pick up, good take by Huxley. He's been a valuable addition. Offside against Fiji. So just uh, drawing breath as the replacement bench looks on. Not an accustomed uh, position against Australia. Five all here. Fiji being held. The world champions who've been in every final this season's IRB Sevens. Winning three titles in George, in Wellington, and last time out in Singapore. Australia without a title since Brisbane 2002. So often close, but never able to... Tie the title down. And the uh, clock stops for attention to the injury. So Australia then the long wait of four years since winning in Brisbane. Two of their squad here were in that side. So maybe that's a good omen. Julian Huxley is recalled and Tim Atkinson too, both from Queensland Reds. And there's the injury at the bottom of the heap, I think. All restored. Serevi playing half back and finding the gap still. Looks for the support. Knows he hasn't got the pace to run it all his way, but Naomi Nanuku goes. Still goes with the dummy. Oh, what a great take that was. Nankalavuki. The handling sometimes is just quite out of this world. And many a player would have uh, not pulled that one back from behind. Watch here. There's Nanuku. over the pass a bit. Went behind him. Pulled it back. And then slid his way home. On the stroke of the half-time hooter. Ten points to five. Fiji take the lead. And Waisali Sarevi in his 29th tournament started in these irb sevens at the age of 20 just misses that one i think the flag stayed down 10-5 is how it stays and so a tough tight game here for fiji australia going about their business very effectively but then there's always that little 
bit of guile and magic that captivates the crowd and so often wins Fiji matches. 10-5 they lead at the break. Glenn Ella, himself a fine sevens exponent, is the coach of Australia. Gary Pierce, another man who won the Hong Kong sevens title a couple of times in Australian colours, is the manager who's in the huddle here. Well, they know they could do it. They've got their strongest lineup probably for the whole season. And they have Fiji in their sights. They trail by just a single try. And they're looking for a first win since 2002. Cardiff four years ago. A win over Fiji, that is. And the first title in four years as well in their hometown of Brisbane. But Fiji, world champions, marginally favourites for this title and for the overall series title, of course. They lead England by 10 points. It won't be New Zealand who won each of the six years of the playing of the IRB Sevens, overall champions six times in all six years. But it's going to be Fiji or England this year. Fiji have a 10-point advantage, which means England have to beat Fiji or score more points than Fiji in, in terms of match points by a two tiers, if you see what I mean. Like, if England win, it's not enough. Fiji have to go out before the semi-finals in one or other of this tournament or London and England win them both. Here come Australia again and a great take and Huxley inside gives the scoring pass to Mark Gilbride and they're back on terms Mark Gilbride another of the Queenslanders here who's come through this season but this was set up by this man Julian Huxley the floated pass but the good support play was well rewarded 10-10 and the conversion to come could give Australia the lead Well, this is the first time Fiji have really looked vulnerable in this uh, opening day of the GMF Paris Sevens. Here's the conversion attempt. It looks very good. It is from Michael Black. Well, he's been ever present all this season. Seven in a row in his first season. And a guy who started out with the Sylvonia Bulldogs. What an influential figure he's become. That's a vital conversion of this try. The band strikes up here in the Stade Charlotte in Paris. Two and a half minutes into the second half. Fiji, the masters of the game, have to strike back. But what a coup this could be for Australia to win now. Once again, Huxley proving an awkward customer. The cover defence is from Nanuku. He's enveloped and the ball in touch. Tense moments as we come towards the midpoint of the second half. There's Dale Tonawai, who's another ever-present this season. Three is the mighty Samisi. Naevo there, Josh Gamji alongside Mark Gilbride. Fiji throw, Naevo deflects, Serevi pulls it back. Risky venture into contact but safely won back. Fiji 
running out of their 22. Spin it on to Bolavusu, danger man. Good tackle, but good support from Nankalabuki. Went forward, did it. Referee says play on. And that's going to drift to touch. Thought the referee for a moment had uh, said a knock on and didn't seem to give advantage to Australia. Replacements coming on. Henry Veratau for Australia. Three minutes 55, just three minutes to play, and Australia lead. Four years since they beat Fiji, but let no one say anything too soon. But the ball is with Australia again, just away by Huxley and spinning wide. They've just got to retain possession and keep their cool. Luke Milton setting it up, still in the 22. Long feed is, is excellent. Two to one out wide. Serevi covers. Cutting back inside is Gilbride. Nice support play. Serevi reads it well. Nails the man. Fiji desperate for possession. They have it now, but four and a half minutes into this second half. The first knock on is Australia's. The tension mounts as the clock ticks by to five minutes of this second half. Two minutes to play. And here's Serevi, the 37-year-old, the first player in Fiji to become a professional rugby player. And what a star of this game he has been, the sevens game. Just uh, scrambles it away under pressure, fed wide by Nankalabuki. Here is Nanuku, one of the players of the season. Now Bolavuthu, Bolavuthu brilliantly tackled the cover back tackle. It's now on the support play. It's now on the repossession. It's there for Australia and well recovered. Veratau, wide. The man from behind is uh, Nanuku. But again with Veratau, Australia need to keep their cool here. Just a minute and a half and possession is key. It's still there. Fly hack through. Australia being hounded. Taken on by... Uh, Gilbride, or rather Gamji, it's a penalty, not released quickly enough, and this is where Fiji are danger again. This is so quick on the retake of the penalties. Nanuku goes wide, and Nanuku gets past the desperate defence of Henry Veratau to score the try that gives them the lead. And how often have we seen it? When the chips are down and the pressure is on, it's Fiji who so often can come from behind. And Naomi Nanuku, the man who was a, a farmer in Nandroga, has become one of the great stars of World Sevens Rugby, has recaptured the lead for the South Pacific Islanders. And those of you watching, I know live in Fiji will be mightily relieved along with uh, the management, Usaya Daunivalu and Jope Tuinkabe. 15 points to 12, and in the last half minute, how close, how often have Fiji been? As Sarevi hits the upright with the conversion attempt, it stays at a three-point margin with 10 seconds remaining. Well, surely the referee will make them restart here. There's only four seconds on the clock. The hoot are scheduled to go any second. There it is, but they'll have to play it. Rightly so. One last chance for Australia. Can they finally, finally get that victory that's eluded them for four years against the mighty Fijians? Fiji can afford to put the ball in touch. They must know that, surely. A little kick. And there it is, put away in the end by Masaki Davu. But it may not be quite the end. There's been a little bit of a contretemps midfield. In this final second involving Dale Tonawai as the final whistle goes. And so with a, just a little bit of a sour taste at the end, they've done it again. For once you thought, is this to be Australia's triumph? over Fiji that it eluded them for four years and 12 meetings it seemed it might be but once again Fiji the masters at coming from behind 
have done it once more and they win 15 points to 12. How close? Ireland and North America. And here, this is the first of the four quarterfinals of the cup competition. And in charge is Rob Debney, the 32-year-old from England, former science teacher, full-time professional referee now. France, the tricolore, the men in white and black from Fiji. Decent uh, hanging start here, but it's Naevo who claims so often those start kicks. No knock on. And the fight for possession. One initially, Vola Vola. Away down the line to Nankalabuki. Offloads beautifully to the pace man, Nanuku. Nanuku surely will outstrip Kopetsky here. Nanuku races and scores under the post. That edge of speed, that slanting, arcing run of Naomi Nanuku, the former farmer from Nandroga, and the perfect start for Fiji, and all starting with that crucial win of the starting kick by Naevo. And then away goes Nanuku. Simple sliding conversion from Waisali Serevi. It's his 432nd conversion and Nanuku's 46th try in IRB 7s. Delight to watch. Didn't go 10. Not a characteristic error from the old master. And France come back, they need a quick score, and Jawa has broken through. Jawa goes, Nanuku holds, Jawa slides to the line. The try is good. What a comeback, and Thierry Janacek looks on. Tremendous effort from Rida Jawa. Well, he was the form guy in the French lineup yesterday. And look how quickly the comeback came. Simple break through. Good pace and then enough momentum to reach the goal line for the man from Po. Just a little dummy. Nanuku tried to hang him, pull him back, but he couldn't. So from wide out, the conversion attempt is off target. It stays with a Fijian advantage of just two points. But they've thrown the gauntlet down here, France. with that instant repost. Well, a thrilling first couple and a half minutes. From Kopetsky, the restart kick up goes Naivo. This time, he's knocked it on. Well, he's often been in seemingly infallible in that uh, context. Not this time, watch. Certainly had the, uh, the reach. Beyond uh, Remy Vaca. But France have the put into the scrum. It shoots back to Kopetsky. On the switch goes Naves. Oh, that was late, was it not? Referee says no. Naivo. Well, perilously close. Oh, I think he has given it after all. And there could be. Will there be a yellow card? Late tackle. Stops the clock, and I think we'll see Naevo may well get the yellow card. The touch judge comes in. Rob Debney is talking with him. Any moment now. There. It's just the penalty. He must grab the player. You can't not use your arms. I think Naevo's lucky here. You can't just block the man, you have to grab the player and go in with your arms. So he's lucky. Kopetsky to Vaka. These, these teams mean business. Held up. Scrummage Fiji. Remy Vaka from Clermont Ferrand. Part of the 
club team which won the the Espoir Cup final only a, a week ago. Vincent Roux, part of the squad, was also in that side, the two 21-year-olds. Sarebi, now with uh, Nanuku. Wide to Nangalabuki. Looks for the big handoff, that's his hallmark, he's away and gone. The big handoff on Rida Jawa was the element that ensured Nankalabuki was clear. His seventh tournament this season. And look at the big handoff. Big man whose father was a Fijian rugby international as well. Restores a clear margin for Fiji. And it should be an extra two points for this 37-year-old. <laughs> That's a nonchalant style. That adds the two points and takes Fiji two scores clear. Well, they can come from anywhere. They all have finishing skills and pace aplenty. Again, France need to come back quickly. High hanging. <laughs> Batted hugely by Naivo. This is Nanuku to Serevi. Enveloped but made available. Picked up by Bolavuthu. Once more, Nanuku, Bolavuthu. Vola Vola traps it with his foot. That's a long loping pass to Naevo. Takes on Vacant, takes on two men, tries to offload, went forward. Advantage France. None comes. So Bolavuthu will have to come back. The scrummage just about on the halfway. A minute to play of this first period. Two tries to one, 14 to five. Fiji looking to avenge their defeat in the final last year. Their sights set on the title, of course. The one that would almost ensure they take the overall crown for this season. Nanuku slips, but recovers well past Kopetsky. Offloaded now with Vola Vola. Two Frenchmen tackling like demons, but through the legs of uh, Masaki Davu. What a lovely moment. Serevi, little hop skip, not quite the jump, but the offload. Possession retained. Nanuku long with Bolavuthu wide. Oh, he's got away from the man in the tackle, cuts back inside, foot in touch. Oh, the instinctive skills that delight. The last play of the half then, and a cracking first half it has proved to be. With Fiji right at the start, the instant France come back. And then the second score that re-established a clear lead for the South Sea Islanders. So France, well, they haven't... Uh, Managed to repeat the glory of the Stade Jean Bois last year. Listening to Thierry Janicek. Keep your discipline, keep your uh, positions. Keep alert, think before the tackle comes in. Support. And then go for it. Close call here. 14 5, it's not a winning margin at this stage.
key moments then, start of the second half. Be decisive the next score in terms of the confidence that it would bring to France if they could come back to the two or Fiji if they can score it, and they do with Bolavusu. Filimoni Bolavusu. And the defensive error was France's. And the 25 year old rattles up another try. Four yesterday, another now, an important one too. Now, here comes the gap, the step through the offload and the, one of the elements, the key elements of Fijian's abilities is this anticipation Let's go, please. and Let's the go, ability please. to offload to the support man. Of course, the support man's got to be there. So Revy through the middle from in front of the post. And that looks like a winning margin now. 28-19 it was to France last year, but it's 19 to up to 21 to 5 now. And the Fijian supporters jubilant. It's a long haul from here, 16 points adrift. Advantage. Theoretically time enough. Advantage. Quick score is uh, a must now. Back to Kopetsky. They haven't been able to release Candolo yet. Their sprinter out on the uh, wide outside. It's uh, Naves who's held. Candolo comes in Run. from... Uh, Narbonne, full international wing three-quarter at 15s, but he's not getting a chance. Luckily for France, a knock-on there. The ball was out, says Rob Debney, as uh, France protest a little. They get the scrummage put in, and they look to uh, get a quick score here. They've still got five full minutes, and they bring on replacements in Nicolas Leroux. And Thierry Brana. Okay. Brana who scored uh, yeah. a cracking try against England. Got them right within touch, and here he is in the half back position. Here's Candelon. Nicolas Candelon, smothered by Waisale Serevi. Penalty lying over the ball, just diving in onto the ground, and they take it quickly, of course. LaRue to Brana, the fresh legs here. Brana lays back, but there's no one in close support. The ball was out. Fiji take it, and happily so, turning it over. One-handed from uh, Naevo. Nankalavuki wide. On the charge now with Sareki, the new young sprinter. Rock! Penalty holding on. Holding on. You heard referee Debney. So France still need urgently that score to come back in. Pate up the middle. Spun wide now. Cross from Jawa. Caro, the captain. They need an inspirational moment quickly. Caro still. But Fiji keep their defensive line intact. But there's an opportunity if they spin it quickly and wide here. Three to two. This is uh, Vacan Candelon now. Candelon goes for the gap and gets the hand off and gets the try. There's the pace man they brought in for his first France Sevens appearance. And he makes his mark here and keeps hopes alive. The second try. And his fourth of the tournament for the young man from Narbonne. Took it well here. Darting little. Uh, run from the man from Narbonne. Still the full three minutes to play, 21-10. They need to uh, do things quickly here. Candelon will take the conversion attempt himself. It's close, it's drifting off the... Oh, cruel! Off the upright and bounces back into the field of play. 21-10, 11 points, two scores still. Sarevi, hauled down by Pate. Well, it really would uh, put this game on 
A knife edge if France could score now. They've got the scrummage. Quick score. Still over two minutes to play. It's theoretically possible. Now or never, Thierry Brana bats it away onto LaRue. But he's in trouble, surrounded, the ball loose, Sarevi, fly hacks, and on it goes with Fiji. On the counter, possession now, but there's no one behind it, France, Sarevi picks up, he's offside. They still have a minute and a half. It's got to be an instant score. Remember, two tries away from Nicolas Leroux via Jawa. He's played well, needs support, that's the problem. Fiji always seemed to have one, two men on hand in support. But Leroux was isolated there, and this could be the turnover. This could seal France's fate, but not, not so, because they get a penalty as uh, Fiji failed to stay on their feet. This, again, is Pate. Now the must-have, it's a knock-on, but it, it's a repeated infringement. There could be a yellow card. Naevo is going off. Well, not surprisingly, within the space of a minute, three times, Fiji were penalised for going in, not staying on their feet after the tackle. Seven against six, but it could be too late. There's only a minute remaining. This is Candelon, the try scorer. On to Jawa. They have to score now. LaRue. And then hope for something special. Tier Runner under the post. It's still a possibility. There's 45 seconds to go. And France have come back magnificently to within six points now. The conversion to come. It's got to happen fast. It's not impossible. Julien Pate adds the two. They're within four points. They have 30 seconds. And Fiji will not be allowed to delay the start. 30 seconds, counting down to 20 seconds. 21-17 in this replay of last year's final. Crowd wild with excitement here. 20 seconds to go, they need possession. Masaki Davu for Fiji. There's a penalty, a penalty to France. This is their final chance. They'll play the penalty, the seven minutes is up. It's now or never. Rida Jawa. They've got to try and set Candelon away. Jawa takes. Which way? Loose pass inside, tense moments with uh, Brana. Up the middle goes Jawa. Jawa almost. Just a quick offload. This is the last play of the tie. This cup quarter final. Fiji on tenterhooks. The crowd on tenterhooks. This is Candelon. Enveloped by Fiji. It's all about possession here. Just to repeat, it's the last play of the tie. Four to three wide, up the middle. Pate looks for the offload. Two men wide, it could be on here. Candelon, Candelon to Vaca to score the winning try. And France have done it again. At the death, France have overcome the might of the world champions, Fiji. What a triumph for Thierry Janacek's squad. It looked lost. It looked to be in vain, but they've come back in the nick of time. 22 points to 21. And the significance beyond just this result, of course, is in the overall series table, which will have delighted England. The only challenges to Fiji for that overall title, because with Fiji out at the quarter-final, if England go on to win, it will all hang on London and Fiji have lost valuable points here by being knocked out at the quarter-final stage. So it's all in the melting pot now, not just for this tournament, but for the overall series title. What a triumph for France! And there the celebrations of Kopetsky, of Remy Vacan, who scored that final decisive try. All credit to France, that is a famous victory, and one that certainly has brought this tournament to life. Fantastic performance. You would not have credited it. Here the final play. Down goes Candelon, the marked man. They were the he was the man they most worried about. Might have been a knock-on there, but I think it was by uh, Sarevi. 
and they kept their cool, they kept their hands, and here's the overlap. Candelon might have been tempted to go himself, but he knew he'd got the pace of big Remy Vacan, the 20-year-old from Clermont-Ferrand. He becomes the hero of the moment. And the triumph is for France, 22-21. The English, well, it's, it's, it's the ball's in their court now. They play their game and control it and play uh, with the style that we know that they can. And as you rightly pointed out, that the vast experience, the difference that they do have, um, that should be enough to carry them home. But an Australian team against England, it doesn't matter what sport it is, they're really gonna, they really want to scalp the Australians. You can be sure of that. Absolutely. And of course, showed much improved form in uh, really uh, running Fiji to the wire yesterday, losing 12 15. Game they could have won. They now have a free kick on their own 10 meter line. Yeah, dangerous play from uh, Seymour at the line out there, taking the jumper out in the air. So here they come with uh, Huxley. Well, if they're going to be a winning team, it's uh, Huxley who could be the big influence. The tall number 12 from Queensland Reds, away now via uh, Gilbert and England. It's nearly breached that gap there, did Andrew Brown. But it went forward, England advantage here. Seymour. An ever present at the breakdown. Ben Gollings. That's for Thilby to chase. Big Rob Thilby. And Seymour is there first as well. That's vital possession. Tries the offload. Just uh, covered by Luke Milton, but England pressing here. Real chance wide. They've got three to two at least. Must be in. Must be in. Russell. Does he ground it? I think so. Try given. Ben Russell. First of the tournament. Excellent build-up work there from uh, Gollings. He saw the space in behind the Australian line and put a lovely kick downfield. The kick was made even better, not by the outside chase for Thirlby, but it was Seymour who came from the inside. It did superbly well to regather the ball. Was unable to offload, but set up a good ruck. And then it was, it was cleared, cleared wide, and uh, Russell is a big, Australia strong breeze. man, and uh, that far out, it's a, that's, a, that's a good finish and the ideal start for the English. Ben Gollings wide out. Just off target this time, but uh, that key influence of uh, Dave Seymour will be joining the England senior squad that's uh, going to Canada for the Churchill Cup. There's Ben Russell, and there's a enigmatic face of Glen Eller and the England uh, pairing of the coaches Mike Friday and uh, Phil Greening. So, good start for England. Now oh, they've got that added incentive with Fiji out of the way, so to speak, in wait, the I cup rounds. Wait. It's open for England. Please, please get away. There's another penalty. Roll, roll away, away, says uh, referee McDowell. Seymour proving very destructive at the breakdown so early in this game already. Once more with Huxley. Oh, nice inside feed with Gilbride. Gilbride challenged by Amor. And the England skipper, a little in stature, but big in heart, brings him down. Still with Black, Andrew Black. Rock, rock. Even from this distance, you can sense the determination of this uh, Wallaby outfit. On the switch with Milton. Bursts through one tackle, now tries to take half of England with him. Five right, metres right, from right, the England rock, line. Rock! Rock! Australian attack is uh, lined deep, but very narrow again. Now they have it with Brown. Andrew Brown trying to put uh, Gilbert through the gap. Release, release, release! Yeah, the ball's there. Pick the ball up. Great defence by uh, Halton and Thilby there, and there's a chance here down the left-hand side. Certainly is with Vilk. Andrew Vilk just uh, backs himself, heads for the corner. Gives himself that extra bit of room. He's going to make it the whole way. Great run. Andy Vilk, his 20th try of the season. He's played in every round for England. And, uh, well, that really took a bit of digging deep to make it the whole way. <laughs> a little thumbs up from, from Phil Greening there. little thumbs up, Vilk. And uh, this was the effort. Yeah, it was a long-range effort there, but it was set up by the uh, by the tackle from um, Halton with Thirlby there. Put a lot of pressure on the Australian win into the contact. They won the turnover, and rightly so, the ball cleared cleared away very quickly from the uh, tackle area there. 
and Vilk had a lot of work to get, uh, he had a lot of distance to go, there a lot of grass to cover and he did well, chased hard by the three Australians coming back in defence but he did very well to maintain his form and finish off a very good try. A useful start, 10-0 for England. Well, they'll be gaining points all the time now for every game they win, of course. Well, this quarter-final semis to come. This is from the touchline, and it just shaves the wrong side of the uprights for Ben Gollings. But 10-0, certainly thrown the gauntlet down to Australia here. That's a two-score lead. Yeah, last one was fine, OK? Same again. Ben Blink. Gollings, sorry, I was going to say, just to recap that Ben Gollings top uh, point scorer this season well, over the 300 point mark including uh, 25 tries as well as all those kicks Simon Amor having to take the stick bravely lies down gets uh, mauled and is ultimately playing England penalised for uh, playing the ball on the floor Australia need a quick one here we're down to the last minute of this first half they could have a chance here Horton's covering the charge of Veratau. Away tackle of 12. Picked up by Black. But there's good pressure here from England, but there's going to be a penalty oh, for England offside. offside. Across the field. Yes. It all advanced. That's a harsh penalty there, I feel. there. The England did very well to uh, scramble back there. Halton again, superb in defence. backwards. Australians just not controlling position at the moment. She must be on here, though. Must be on with Veratau. Good cover by Horton, the inside flick though is successful. Luke Milton pulls one back for Australia. Well, they picked off the three on two over here on the right hand side and it was uh, once again that man Horton who uh, tackling very well in the one-on-one -on -one situations. I thought he had actually uh, he had snuffed that move out but Gollins actually stepped out of the line, really went and played the ball instead of holding for the man on the switch here and you there he it. is. You're absolutely spot on. And uh, Gollin's a man of his experience. He'll know uh, that was a mistake, but um, I'm sure he won't drop his head. He's uh, such a vital man to this English team. And uh, that score just on half time uh, brings Australia right back into it. The kick is all close, but wrong side again. But it's two tries to one. It's 10 5 at the break. And this semi final place is still wide open. England lead 10-5 against Australia. Australia constructing some nice play here in, in the first half and uh, will be up for a couple of errors. Pretty much have dominated the ball in the first period. Uh, England really will just look to um, start out the second half. Well, I'm sure the coaches will be calling for first score after half time. Very vital in this game just for the momentum and for the confidence of the team. It's Mike Friday, let's listen in. He's a former England Sevens captain player himself. It's a brief minute, isn't it? Half time break, gather some breath. Last words from the coach, last words from the skipper. And for Australia, something of a psychological hurdle to cross here as well with that trail of defeats, albeit so often so close, at the hands of England. The last 12 meetings, they've yet to beat England. It's, uh, it's four years ago, but it's often been so close. 26-14 last time out in Singapore, but in touch still. And a lovely uh, Parisian afternoon developing here. The blue sky is with us at last. Chill morning, but it's really warming up now, as is the tournament. Good knockback by Ben Russell. Amor, for once, misses partner Gollings to Horton. This bank of experience here, and Horton back in the squad, just clung to. Desperate effort by Australia, but... Uh, He's laid over the ball and it's a penalty. Australia with a chance here. Inman quick to take on to Black. Black now he's through. Surely here's the try. Taken and given. Andrew Brown to score it. And that's a quick fire response by Australia. They're back on terms and the conversion to come. 
This game is really going to go to the wire. Well, England did all the good work there. Horton isolated pressure on, on the tackler. The tackler put a lot of pressure on, and there was the resulting uh, penalty played very quickly by Black out to the left-hand side. He saw the mismatch. Seymour stepped in to try and make the hit on him. That was an easy finish there for Brown, but very well, uh, very well read by Michael Black. Well, Australia hell bent on a turnover of last year's result here. They lost 24 to nil against England in the plate semi-final in Paris. Andrew Brown was part of that side. The youngster, there's uh, Gary Pierce and Glenn Aller just uh, talking through with Paddy O'Brien, the uh, refereeing manager of the IRB. Andrew Brown, product of that to great rugby nursery, Brisbane Boys College, he's here again now with the ball in hand. And there'll be confidence restored with that quick score. Andrew Black, 4-2 to two here. Can they use it well? 2-1 to one against Thurlby. Covering hard is uh, Strettel who's come in, they're over the line, the score must be given. Oh, well played Australia, Veratau, and uh, they'll be holding their nerve on the bench here as Australia have come back with a double blow at the start of this second half. Well, it's a, it comes back to the restarts again. The ball reclaimed by Australia. They had a four on two here. The English drifted very well. Thurlby tried to stay out with his man. Strettel could not make the tackle on the much stronger Veratau, and uh, a very good finish. One of those who mentioned at the start had come back from Super 14s to the Wallaby squad from the Queensland Reds, and look at this. Strettel held him but couldn't stop that momentum. It's now turned round, a lead for Australia. No conversions by either team, but it's 15-10, and there's a, a more anxious look now on the faces of the England team management. Mike Friday there. We've got four and a half minutes to play. Australia lead. Still a lot of time to go for the English team. There's no need to panic yet. No. And they certainly won't with the experience they have out there on the field. It's just a matter of getting your hands on the ball and just regaining composure. Important restart. Knocked back by Ben Russell. Does his part. Now Gollings. Well, he's got pace that surprised people often to Thurlby. Not quite the edge of acceleration. Andrew Brown with the tackle. And there's a knock on. It's advantage, but none for Australia. They'll have the scrum. And it's really tense out there now. England knowing how important this is. They want to get points at the expense of Fiji. They've got to get through this one to make sure they get an advantage and cut the deficit going into London next week, the final tournament. Superb covering back there from Brown. Lovely tackle on Thirlby. He's played a big part, Brown. This is Huxley. One of the players who played the last time Australia won a competition back in Brisbane, 2002. Huge tackle on uh, Strettel, but Amor to the rescue via Thirlby, via Gollings. But they've cut them off here, and Strettel, though, finding a bit of space. They'll not need to give him too much because he's away. But the support is good, and Thirlby, Rob Thirlby, comes back and puts it under the post. That should be a seven-pointer and will restore the lead to England. Good play in close confines. Outstanding play from the English team. Strettle did very well back there in defence with Simon Amor. Firstly, to regather the kick, launch the counter-attack as he did, held the ball up very nicely, drew in the Australian defenders who were guilty of ball-watching there, and no-one picked up Thirlby on the switch. Very good finish, and a well-worked try by this English team who, as we know, can attack from all areas on the field and uh, really held their composure well there. The youngster Strettle did very well, and... Uh, Australia now with the work to do. 17-15 down, and there was the, the experience of this man here. He took the angle up, he could see what Strettel was doing, he read it. It's that vision, that uh, sevens rugby brain. And this is where England have, uh, I think, wisely, shrewdly selected uh, those experienced men in critical moments. 17-15, but still about, uh, what, over two minutes to play. And only two points in it, Australia now. Who's got the nerve? Or the moment of skill or magic? Good offload. Australia on the charge back with Luke Inman. Inman on now to Tim Atkinson, another of the Super 14 players. He shrugs off with the hand, couple of tackles, he's saved the ball, no, retention. Up, wait, wait, and it's going to be Australia's ball here. We've still a minute, three quarters to go. It was a good decision by the referee there. A lot of people calling for the penalty here. This is very strong work from the Australians here. That's um, 
Atkinson, who really a uh, great handoff on Gollins, who had made a good cover in tackle, but he powered through it. But the, the English player could not get out of there, and uh, hence the referee not awarding the penalty. And just settles for the scrum with a rule in just the tackle ball area. And they have the scrummage as Australia bring on uh, AJ Gilbert. And the tension as England in turn bring on Will Matthews. We're down to the last minute and a half. Is there to be a game breaker here? One way or t'other. Two points only. 17-15 to England, this cup quarter final. England disrupt the Australian scrummage. Away gold, away gold. Away gold and England a vital scrummage win there against the odds. Strettle wide, bad pass, knock on. Advantage Australia and this is Milton. Milton looks inside, gets the ball just in time to Gilbert in to score. It's given. Well, it was England's error that led Australia in. Dramatic moment for Australia. They have retaken the lead. And Simon Amor just questioning the uh, outcome of that, but the try is awarded. The mistake made by Thurlby with a poor pass and put Strittle under all sorts of pressure. The ball was lost forward. It's very well regathered by Milton. And then with the first touches uh, since he's come on, uh, AJ Gilbert, uh, as he's done in the, previous thing, in the previous games in the competition, has had an impact. And here he goes over to give the Australian, t Australian side the lead. But there still is time for the English. It's just a matter of regathering this restart. 18 seconds to go. The conversion was successful. Terrific kick. 22 to 17. Which adds pressure to England because it means they would need to score a kickable conversion. It's all perhaps on this restart kick. We've seen England at the death before pull games out of the fire. Up go Australia. Up go England. It bats, comes back to Australia. They could even wrap it up here. They could even put it in touch, I guess. Had they the... Oh, it's a decisive man. It's all over for England as Atkinson goes in again. What an influence he's played a part at the end. There's a little bit of a fracas going on in the overexcitement of the moment. But Australia, I can tell you, have stopped that England sequence of 12 successive wins. They have beaten them at long last. December 2002, Australia's last victory over England. And now they have come back after a lean time of 12 successive defeats and they have made the semi-final for the first time this season. And what a triumph, what disappointment for England, knowing especially that Fiji too had gone out at this quarter-final stage. The final whistle goes, what drama here, Simon Mannix. Well, it's a huge result there for the Australians and a massive disappointment for this English side uh, who really... Uh, well, it was theirs to win this tournament, and uh, they've really they've let themselves down there. They've gifted this game to Australia. They were in control. They were playing nicely. But the Australians, fair play to them in the second half. They stuck to their guns. They controlled possession, forced the pressure, and forced the English mistake, which led to the try, which gave them the go-ahead try. And here we're seeing the final try, and uh, a little bit of unnecessary going in with the knee there just at the finish of the game, which uh, upset the Australian players. But um, I'm sure that'll all be forgotten when they reflect on what is a fabulous victory. And... Uh, now sees them on course for a semi-final, and uh, as for the English boys, well, they've got a lot to ponder. That was theirs for the taking this tournament. Well, it this program is wins for each 36 times they've met, but perhaps most significantly, Fiji have won every time they've met this season, five times in all, and New Zealand still waiting for that first win over the world champions this season. The side, remember, New Zealand who till now had won every IRB series. And this will be the first season to this point without a title, with London only to come. Well, the sides of tremendous talent, but always one sensed, uh, Simon Mannix, there was a vulnerability, wasn't there, which was exposed really at the back end yesterday when Fiji just scraped home against Australia and New Zealand looked uncomfortable in beating Argentina. Yeah, certainly they, uh, once they were put under pressure in the earlier games without the same intensity, they look unbeatable, they really do. These two teams have sent the bench benchmark over the years uh, for World Sevens rugby. And, but certainly with the, when the pressure was applied, when they came up against a team who could match them physically, match them for speed, such as the Australians and the Argentinians, they really did put them under some pressure. And uh, 
Although at the same time, it still is a shock to see these teams competing at this stage of the competition. But uh, you can be sure they'll be taking the same intensity as if it were a, as if it were a final in the cup section because uh, an awful lot of pride here and uh, both co both sets of coaches uh, they'll be really wanting to get one over each other here and for Fiji the added incentive of course is they need the points they lie at the top of the IRB 7's overall championship but they want to win this plate competition because that will give them eight points as opposed to the four which go to the quarter-final cup placements so they can go on and get four more points and uh, keep ahead of England going into London by a significant margin the whites of Fiji how will they react that's probably half the battle now who will respond better to the disappointments of losing cup quarterfinals and just for the record there has never been a cup semi-final lineup without one at least of England, New Zealand or Fiji, principally New Zealand and Fiji who were so dominant in those early seasons. So it's a day of history really here today with uh, such a changed lineup from what we might have expected. Here come New Zealand then, first attacking uh, runs from them. Dwayne Sweeney, who's played all this season but only his fifth tournament altogether, so quite new to it, Nigel Hunt. And uh, no Tafayo Asa in this lineup, but here's an impressive man as ever. Roy Kinney Kinney Lau, they just seem to bounce off him. Away with Raya Kambula into Soakai, just short of the line. Desperate Fijian defence, and eventually a penalty for not releasing. Great defence from the Fijians here, scrambled back. It was a promising attack from the New Zealanders, but really well snuffed out by the Fijians. Now they'll just look to settle things down a little bit. Well, the influence of uh, Waisali Sarevi may not have the edge of pace, but he's very much there as the controlling influence to keep the discipline, to keep the organisation, and that's a lovely backhanded flip pass, which gives a stroll home all the way for Nankelevuki. Sorelli Nankelevuki, for a moment I was going to say naive, <laughs> who's similar in build, but this guy's not quite as tall as the massive hulk of Semisi Naeva. This is... Sirelli Nankelamuki and a totally against the run of play and possession. It's Fiji who break out and how often have we seen them do that? Gordon Teachens not best pleased. Well, it was, it was, it was his partner in crime there, Saivu, who got the pass away out the back door, drawing the attention, as you say, massive men of two defenders. And they came in, slipped a beautiful ball there to the outside. And after, well, that, uh, that's the gentlest of strolls on a Paris afternoon, isn't it? And their first attack, and their first piece of possession, really, that they scramble to get. But a lovely offload. Those little bits of sheer skill and instinctive, it seems to be. Conversion is not on, so it's 5 0. The Fiji and such natural ball handlers, it doesn't matter the stature of the player, they really do look so comfortable on the ball. Very similar to the Samoans, also, who have impressed me with their. Uh, with their ball handling capabilities, but uh, it's Fiji again with the restart. New Zealand trying to break the mould. They've been blocked at every turn by Fiji this season. Every tournament they've met them, every tournament they've lost. Here come Fiji again, via Sarevi, onto Volavola. Takes two men, three men in the end to bring down another powerful being with... Uh, Naevo, the handoff, the one hand flip pass, the acceleration of Bolavusu. Terrific, absolutely terrific. Well, you called it perfectly there, Nigel. They were three men were taken into the first ruck situation. After then, it was Naevo who managed uh, to draw in another defender, losing his shorts in the process. and fed it off to Bolavuku, who went through what was a pretty lame effort by Kini Kini Lau at the back there. And uh, it's this sort of. Um, these sorts of tackles here, which if you're going to beat Fiji, you've really got to make them. You, the player has got to be stopped at source, and uh, there was an opportunity to cut that scoring action off. Wasn't taken, and once again, the Fijians, they, they sense a weakness, they're going to pounce. And how? So, measure of uh, early contentment for Rushaya, Daunivalu, Yopi Tuukabi on the uh, Fijian bench. But the, uh, the guy who basically calls most of the shots these days in sevens rugby in Fiji is uh, <laughs> young Sarevi coach player coach captain 
And the man who was influential in uh, saying to William Ryder, I'm sorry, you were meant to attend the training session that you said you'd come to. I know you'd only recently been married, but we had agreed a date for you to return to the squad. You didn't, so you're not coming. Well, some perhaps back in Fiji will say they've missed Ryder. Perhaps they have, but uh, maybe in the longer term, that little bit of disciplinary action will reap dividends. It's serious, this sport. It's serious, especially in Fiji, where it is the national game. No surprise in that. They lead 12-0. Here come New Zealand. After that early pressure, no points yet. DJ Forbes into touch forced out and that's a key thing the forcing out of the player in possession gets you the throw in that is to the opponent and that, that's uh, vital the, the Fijian lineup functions superbly with Naiovu there in the middle uh, he's such a gifted ball player uh, such a big man but they, the New Zealanders put him under pressure but, he still, they, but he still manages to, to regather the ball from a poor throw and uh, that, that's a testament to the strength of the man I've never seen a side look more comfortable with ball in hand as a rule. Off! Oh, that was some dump tackle. But Bolavusu still has it. They recover from that. and He's on one of those long arcing runs. And still had to offload in the end. But look at the support. Tonawai wide from the Nuku. On to Naevo. And in touch. Not quite the fairy tale ending, but... Well, it, it deserved to try, and it should have been taken. They're, they're, they're guilty of just a little bit of complacency there, the Fijians, not drawing the... And Naivu had a lot of work to do here because the uh, the player inside who gave the pass didn't take out the extra defender. But uh, good scrambling defence from New Zealand is showing that their uh, the heads certainly haven't dropped, and they're going to chase everything down. That's in the New Zealand character, isn't it? Uh, and you should know as an all-black. They pride in the jersey. In sevens as in fifteens, believe me, and uh, testimony to that, they're a fantastic record throughout this series of IRB sevens championships, which they have dominated and won every year till now. And perhaps for the benefit of the IRB tournaments in general, that's a deliberate knock-on, is it? I was going to say, just just by way of a change, to have someone else winning the overall title is uh, is good for the future. I'm sure the Gordon Titchens would fail to agree on that, but uh... I, I, I think Gordon Titchens. <laughs> no, I, I really I think, he think, might. He, I think he would agree with it because uh, certainly uh, for the development and growth of the game worldwide, it, it's very important. But uh, from a New Zealand development, also, this is uh, some serious questions will be asked after the season. I'm sure they've already been asked already, and uh, they'll be addressed quickly, uh, knowing uh, the professionalism that Gordon Titchens brings to the Seven program in New Zealand, that uh, they'll come back a much stronger team next season. And they won't want excuses, but I would point to the absence of one of the new stars who's been snapped up by New Zealand Maoris, Corey Jane, and the absence of the old wizard, Amasio Roma Valence, who. Uh, was such a key playmaker, a, a wonderful talent, and one of the all-time great sevens exponents from New Zealand, like Eric Rush. Well, I'm uh, wittering on because that's a half-time whistle. It's 12 points to nil, two tries to nil. This was New Zealand's last flourish, and uh, a guy there back from Super 14s, Roy Kinikinilau, played uh, last in the seven a year ago, and perhaps hasn't got that edge of uh, fitness and. Uh, can't instantly come back into the game when you've been absent a long time. That's that's sure. It's, uh, it is a totally different uh, ball game in, in terms of sharpness, in terms of speed. Uh, the anaerobic work uh, much harder than in the 15 game in the 15 man game for a winger. Uh, you're not really deprived of oxygen as you in the 15s game as you are out here in the sevens field. And uh, certainly a big ask for him, but uh, he's a player with the experience. And uh, I don't think Gordon Titchens uh, would have taken him on board if he didn't think he could have offered something uh, to sure. this side. Oh, he's been magnificent in his time. Interesting point that Gordon uh, made to me the other day was about, you know, he welcomes back these guys from Super 14 and from, from National Provincial Cup Rugby and so on in New Zealand in back into the seven squad. He said, but he, I have to lose something like up to seven kilos because they are so, in the modern 15 side game, so built up upper body weight and so on he said but it, you cannot have a spare ounce of fat in sevens well exactly it's a it's a different body type now that is playing this game we're seeing the uh, the 15 man game has really taken on it's a much more muscular game uh, the rules have sort of dictated that now and it's a lot more uh, the contact area it's, it's vital now and you can't play the game anymore as a 70 kilo uh, winger you know we go back 
if you pass your mind back to uh, great all black wingers who have played sevens and also 15 such as Terry Wright uh, absolutely no place for a guy of his stature anymore in the modern game but in sevens, it's that's still there. That is still there. That the, the guy with the speed like that. Uh, or any IE people like that. Exactly. You see what Natural ball big. players. Yep. Yeah. So Jean-Luc Weberal, the French referee, and Fiji. Well, their target still on. <laughs> no, it's a bit of a lazy way of doing it, really. He actually goes to bat the ball, and it didn't work that time because the ball went skewed sideways into New Zealand hands. Rudy Wolf, great to see him back, isn't it? The guy who had this terrible uh, neck injury broke his neck driving into a an empty swimming pool uh, a, a year ago thought that was the end of his rugby and he's helped set this one up which has gone well he set that one up by himself Kenny Kenny Lau. he really has unlucky uh, huge hanging kick off there from Sarebi uh, Naivu has gone up to bash it back as he does volleyball uh, style it's, it's fallen nicely for Wolf, who uh, held his composure, attacked down the left-hand side and then swung it across to the right. And they were nicely picked off with Kinney Kinney Lau giving the change of direction. Here we have Wolf. He's away down the right, down the left-hand side there. Steps on the inside, gets back to his feet. Does very well here, under a lot of pressure. Picks out Forbes, I think it was, on the way. Yeah, it was Forbes. On to Kinney Kinney Lau. Good step. And through he goes. Terrific. And Wolf, wonderful. I think so many feared they wouldn't see him back on the rugby field and uh, such a serious injury almost exactly a year ago. And here he is representing New Zealand again, who are back in this one. 12-7, pressure on Fiji once again. This time Naevo secures it. Away from Vola Vola to Serevi, to the flying Nanuku. Flying he is, flying he does. Oh, just turns on the gas. Great score, big one. Very well executed, just just simple mismatches and, and, and realising what uh, who's up against you, who's opposite you and just knowing you've got the speed to take him on and he knew there that Nigel Hunt was never going to live with him, he took him on an arc and uh, that, that's just that's just great running, that, that difficult to coach, that. that's, uh, that's just there, the natural it? ability, yep. without a doubt, took him on the outside and then arced his way back across, far too much gas for the covering Sweeney and... Uh, just a wonderfully taken try, a very Fijian try. Super score. A bit too casual there. Well, he always looks casual to Serevi, but uh, he'll be angry with that because it leaves New Zealand still within striking distance. We've got a uh, full five minutes to play, but this was lovely. His sixth try of the tournament from the 30-year-old who belies his years, Naomi Nanuku. Seventeen seven. New Zealand just not able to get their hands on the ball here. Fiji doing everything right. Bolivus to Serevi. He won't go on the outside. He might try and beat a guy or two, but uh, swallowed up. And is it a turnover? It's a penalty, in fact. Get up on your feet. Good pressure from the uh, New Zealand defence there. The tacklers in, got to their feet very quickly. They have all the rights at the tackle situation if they get back to their feet to play the ball. And Bolivus, who didn't. So, another score now would uh, throw this one in the melting pot. Raikambula on the switch with Sweeney. Sweeney still goes, and he's slipped the tackle of Nanuku. They're right back in the hunt here. <laughs> Well played, Raikambulu. Really looked around, looked totally uninterested. Uh, Lowed the Fijians into that uh, false sense of security from the tap kick, but uh, Sweeney, great strength, powering through the tackles there. And uh, that's another way to score a try, isn't it? Not taking them on the outside. There you have the, uh, the switch play came back, and it's very strong to hold his feet there, and then bursting out of uh, a pretty weak. Uh, Tackle there from Nanuku, the, the the previous try scorer, but on the other other side of the ball, not so strong. Sweeney can get them within three here. It's a lovely strike of the ball. It's two more points. It's 17 to 14 now. And Dwayne Sweeney adds up the points. Top New Zealand scorer who has only represented New Zealand this season. I'm just trying to make out what it is. It's what. Uh, well, he scored two tries and uh, eight, ten conversions to add to 109 points before this tournament. All scored this season. 
And they're within three now of Fiji, these oldest of rivals, the greatest of sevens exponents over the years. It's Edwin Cocker who's come on. It's a good decision by Cocker not to let that one go under pressure. Reichenbuhler, dumb is the pass inside to Sweeney. Wants to take out a couple of uh, Fijians. But they've not stayed on their feet. That's so often the problem. And it's uh, an anxious Serevi who wants to get the quick tap away. Knocked out of the hands. It was out of the hands of uh, Nanuku. Not forward by him. And these little bits of error and the possession that brings another chance for New Zealand to get, get ahead. 17-14 they trial. Well, 36 times they've met. This is the 37th. New Zealand won 20, Fiji 16, but Fiji have won every time this season that they've met, five times in a row in the cup stages of the competition. Next score wins it, is my guess. Two minutes to play, three points in it. And remember, Fiji need these points to stay ahead of England. Serevi just tries to draw the defence across towards him. They'll want more than just ball retention, they'll want one more score. That was a knock-on, I think, Serevi. He looks aghast at the decision, but I think it may have been more forward than lateral. Let's have a look. Definitely a knock-on oh, yeah, there by Serevi. Good pressure again at the breakdown by the New Zealanders. Uh, Forbes has been particularly strong in this tournament. He's impressed me with his work mm. at the breakdown area. But now it's uh, they've really got to take them on here. They've um, got to really take the attack to them. Uh, look to Kenny Kenny Lau to make the difference here. Forbes, the Aucklander, who uh, made his name in the National Provincial Sevens. Great tournament they hold down in Queensland every year. That's where uh, Gordon Titchens picked him up. Here's another man he picked up <laughs> a couple of years ago now, Roy Kenny Kenny Lau. Former Otago Highlander out of the Super 14s. Oh, on the breakaway. And it's a little romp home. And that settles it with Nambulewanka. In the last minutes of this plate semi final, gives relief to Fiji and frustration again for. The men in black. Well, I called that one superbly. Can he, can he allow to make the difference? And he, he did. did for the Fijians. Threw away the ball in the tackle area. And, uh, you know, the, these are the small mistakes, but it's the difference between uh, competing in finals and uh, not competing in the finals. And unfortunately, it's been too many of those small errors that have cost the New Zealand team. So all set for uh, Fiji against England or Argentina. Well, he just escaped, didn't he? The young man from Red Rock, Suva. Red Rock, all for so long, the uh, principal sevens top club in Fiji. So 22-14, it's safe now, because there's the hooter, and even seven points wouldn't be enough. It's a shame it's not last try wins. Yes. <laughs> We've had a few of those, haven't we? We certainly have today. Dwayne Sweeney, Reichenbulla, then with Kinney Kinney Lau. Too late to make amends, but uh, they want the last word anyway. Reichenbulla didn't have anyone on his elbow, had to fling wide. That meant a sort of a check pass, really. It slowed the movement down. Kinney Kinney Lau, ex Wellington Hurricane. Long time a provincial servant. Sweeney. Well, extraordinary here, a season in which this team here in the black hasn't made a final, let alone won a tournament. <whistles> Quite extraordinary. Six times overall champions, a first season with no wins and no finals as well. Not even the plate final today either 22 14 and it's the seven minutes up I doubt surely Sir Evie wants to do more than just kick it into touch no he wants a bit more practice for his youngsters the 37 year olds started every game hasn't he yes he has he's uh, he's belied his age and oh, what a wonderful play Nanuku he can wait he can watch the ball <laughs> but isn't that wonderful 
you know, he didn't have to think twice about the pickup. He knew he'd get it, and there you go. They had the last one. It just, I suppose, that just turns the screw a bit, doesn't it? Well, it does, and uh, they had the New Zealanders. They had them in the coffin. They closed it, and uh, now they put them uh, six <laughs> feet under well and truly. And uh, the, the New Zealanders, they... Yeah, that, that's a pretty, they fizzled out pretty um, pretty miserably here in this game, but uh, again, we just see the brilliance of the Fijians, and you can only admire that. So that makes it six in a row. They've certainly got the psychological advantage now whenever they meet Fiji. So they, Fiji, will go on to the plate final, and they will be looking for those valuable extra points to keep their noses ahead and some way ahead of England in the IRB series trophy for the first time. Fiji then, led by Waisale Savevi, the famous Sam's player of all time. It's a strong-looking uh, Fijian squad once again. They've won the last three confrontations uh, against Argentina. They won the cup semi-final. They won in the cup semi-final in Singapore last time out by 26 points to 7 at the pool stage in Los Angeles by 17 points to 15 and the cup final itself in George by 21 points to 19 back in December. One or two new faces in the uh, Argentine uh, lineup. Marcella Bosch, Felipe Gutierrez, Carlos Or Orlando. But the, uh, their top point scorer, number seven, Santiago Gomez Cora, is on the bench for this uh, plate final. No doubt he'll come on before the final whistle. So Argentina have it all to do then. They last defeated Fiji 12 months ago in London in the cup quarter final. And they won by 31 points to five. Getting ready for their final against uh, South Africa. And what a weekend it will be for the Islanders if they could clinch the tournament here. They've never won an IRB Sands tournament, and this is the seventh season of competition. The most inconsistent uh, team on the circuit. I wonder whether it could be Samoa's Day here in Paris. At the start, the Charlotte team. Interested onlookers, the uh, German squad, they uh, got to the Shield uh, final. First time out uh, in the IRB Sevens series since uh, the first year, 1999-2000, when they uh, competed in uh, Mar del Plata and Punta del Este. Not too disappointed, they defeated Russia. So they uh, achieved their ambitions of winning at least one game here for greater exposure for the game in Germany and that's what Sounds is all about. It's such a shame that uh, it wasn't admitted to the uh, Olympic Games. That's in the past. Could well happen someday again in the future. As Fiji make their way out for this plate final with Saleh Sarevi. Joint uh, Sevens coach here with Joppe Tuinkambe, 37 years old. He admits to being 37 years old, Wesale Zarebi. Such an influence in the game. And winning is so important for the Islanders. And they have a chance this year of winning the IRB series for the first time ever. New Zealand have won it for the last six years not made a final this year. Fiji, well, they're riding high at the moment, and it will be absolutely wonderful to see them uh, clinch the trophy in London next weekend. So we can uh, take one step nearer to achieving that ambition here in the plate final against Argentina in the next 15 minutes or so. Argentina, the traditional blue and white shirts, Shake of the hand uh, between the captains. It's coming up to 6.15 here, local time in Paris. We greet uh, viewers once again from Fiji. 
Sports TV Portugal, Showtime in the Middle East, Super Sport in South Africa, and Setanta Ireland. The plate final. Fiji against Argentina. The whole Fijian squad out on the park. In a huddle, in a word of prayer probably said by uh, Waisale Sarevi himself. Taking charge of the plate final is uh, Frenchman Jean Luc Rebral. Fiji then uh, won the cup in George in uh, South Africa, one in Wellington, one in Singapore. Lost in the final to England uh, at Hong Kong, lost to England in Los Angeles as well, and lost to England in Dubai. Right, 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 Enzo, okay. Play on, play on. First touch then for Sarevi. Sarevi Dangelevuki. Having a go, Naomi Nanuku. He's got two tries against New Zealand in the semi final. Filimone Mbolavuthu. Got into passing here. Should be a try on for Fiji. It's claimed by uh, Mbolavuthu. Great speed and a great sidestep has uh, Mbolavuthu. Excellent interplay between uh, Tonewai and Vola Vola. That was Bolavuthu claimed the score. First blood then to uh, Fiji. Seven minutes each way, it'll be ten minutes each way in the cup final itself. Fijian rugby at its very best. Neuimi Nanuku slots the conversion. And Fiji lead Argentina by seven points to nil. Just over a minute on the clock. It was that pass from uh, Dale Tonewai. Took the tackle. And that's what created the opportunity. Masale Sarevi with a high kick from the kickoff. And this is where Fiji are so good okay, at the restart. Vitally important that you retain possession in sevens. And. Uh, It's important that you reclaim your restarts as well. It's the try scoring team, of course, that restarts okay, in the okay, seven aside okay. code, and like the uh, the 15 man code. Sarevi wide out on the right, turns back inside, finds uh, Sarelli Nangelevuki in close support, breaks uh, some weak tackling. Oh, Fiji, I'm going to run away with this one. Sarelli Nangelewoki claims his fifth try of the weekend, much to the delight of the Fijian support in the crowd. Wherever Fiji play, there's a, a good, solid support. Two minutes on the clock, two tries for Fiji. Nemuku to add the conversion. Conversion is missed. The scoreline reads Fiji 12, Argentina nil. It's all started by uh, Waisale Serravi. Strong, determined running from uh, Sirali Nangelevuki. Here they come once again. Tony Wai to the try scorer, Nangelevuki. Tony Wai again. Taking the hit and can dish out some punishing hits as well. Nanuki, Nanuku rather. Run around all day. Hey. At last, then, an opportunity for Argentina. They've got their hands on the ball. Carlos Orlando, a debutant in the Argentinian squad here in Paris. Felipe Gutierrez, another debutant. What support? They should have men over here. It's a three on two situation. They have a hint of a. Crossing possibly now then can't get they get the try through Felipe Gutierrez. Yes, Jean-Luc Reboyal's arm is in the air. So Argentina have struck back. They're gonna make a game of it. Yeah. 
Made heavy weather of scoring, though, did the uh, Argentinians. But uh, Felipe Gutierrez of Farrell used his strength <laughs> to claim the score. Neat uh, sleight of hand. Felimone and Bolabuthu came in with a tackle, but uh, Gutierrez had the strength to force his way over. Fiji 12, Argentina 5. Some four and a half minutes on the clock. Remind ourselves that's the uh, Argentinian coach in the new face to IRB World Sounds, Jorge Scoseria. Okay. Argentina looked to have it covered. And they will get the penalty. Fiji ten meter, ten meter. diving in. They need to retreat now the 10 meters as Orlando stands over the ball. But uh, try will have given the Argentinians some confidence. Mariano Dobal with a neat little chip ahead. Was it knocked forward? Advantage. Yes, it was. Advantage Argentina. One no ah. Two no well, no perhaps goal. Monsieur Robelal should have let that one go. Advantage was there for Argentina. Minute and a half remaining than of the uh, first half. Knocked forward by uh, Fiji initially. Coach and and, uh, engage. Referee Rebolal says okay. that uh, Dobal in turn also knocked it forward. Del Busto. Oh, it's a second try for Argentina. Brilliant work by Ramiro Del Busto. It's his first season of Sevens Rugby on the international circuit. Plays for the Los Patreros Club down there in Buenos Aires. Quickly taken there from the base by Carlos Orlando. Found Ramiro Del Busto in close support. And Argentina are back in the hunt. Yes, the Fijians need to uh, clear the path for Mariano Dobal to have a, a clear sight of the posts. Looks promising. Yes, it's there. So Fiji 12, Argentina 12, with just over 30 seconds remaining of the first half in this the plate final. Well, what a feather it would be in uh, this uh, gentleman's cap if Argentina could defeat Fiji. The first time out as coach, I wonder. 12 points all. Fiji claiming the early tries, a little nervousness in the uh, play of the Argentinians. Couldn't get their hands on the ball. Fiji again, the barnstorming run downfield from Sirelli Nangelevuki as the uh, Huta blows for half time. This will be the last piece of action of the opening seven minutes. Carlos Orlando, he certainly looks good. Showing improvement as the tournament progresses. Long striding Simisi Naivo recalled uh, to the squad for the Paris Sevens. Right. Valuable contribution from the uh, the lanky Nandi player. Timing the passing well is uh, Nangelevuki, and again it's that pass back inside, creating uh, space for Mbolavuthu. Advantage Argentina. Penalty quickly taken by Ramiro Del Busto. Scorer of Argentina's second try. Argentina need to retain possession. Orlando, now then, inside, then out. Again, well taken by Marcello Bosch. A few familiar names missing from the Argentinian lineup. Uh, okay, Lucio okay, Lopez, okay. Fleming, Pablo Gomez, Cora, Juan Ignacio Gautier. But the, uh, the youngsters, the debutants are doing well. Oh, well done, Samisi Naivo. Long striding Samisi Naivo. Can he get Argentina's third try? Yes, he can. And give the Fijians the lead at the break. Samisi Naivo. Member of the uh, Melrose Cup Rugby World Cup Sam's winning uh, team for Fiji back in Hong Kong uh, last year. Samisi Naivo, so deceptive. And he's a, a big unit, you try and pull him to ground. Blowing a bit, and he's got pace plenty, has uh, Simisi Naivo. Very valuable at the restarts as well. So, Naomi Nanuku, for the third time of asking, with the conversion attempt. It's there, 
So we arrive after the break with Fiji leading Argentina by 19 points to 12. Look again. Had to try. Oh, it's a bit of Argentina won the cup the one and only time uh, in Los Angeles back in 2004. Reached the finals on uh, nine occasions. Less urgency possibly in the Fijian camp. 39 finals, 10 cup wins, 9 plate wins as well. Always finished in the top 8 in every tournament, tell the Fijians. Will they be crowned uh, IRB Series champions next weekend at Twickenham? Talk that uh, Wasalis Ravi might retire after the heroic efforts of the Islanders at the Hong Kong Rugby World Cup Sevens last year. But he played better than ever at this year's Hong Kong Sevens, despite being uh, denied a cup win. Looking okay. to put that ball right on the uh, 10 meter line. It's claimed by uh, Mosese Vola Vola. Fiji in control. Top of the second half. Naivo again getting away from his tackler, creating space for Vola Vola. Back there was Carlos Orlando. Illegally done, says Jean Luc Rebolal. So Argentina will have the, uh, the penalty. Looks as if it's a uh, Carlos Orlando, who's been injured in the tackle as he pulled Vola Vola to ground. Argentina lost in the uh, plate, in the cup final rather, to Fiji and, uh, and George by two points, 19 against 21. And in the cup semi final in Singapore last time out, by 26 points to seven again to Fiji. Spanish isn't that good, but I think uh, the coach was saying, be careful in the contact area. You, know, you could well be ambushed by the Fijians. Hint of a, a forward pass. But diving in, uh, claimed the Fiji, the Argentinian player, and then the referee Jean-Luc Raboyal was in, uh, in agreement. Just over a minute gone in the second half, 19 points to 12, a converted try. That's uh, Fiji's lead over Argentina, Del Busto. Secures the ball at the line-out. On the scissors, back comes Marcella Bosch, straight down the middle. One-on-one -on -one here, then Bosch against Naomi Nanuku. Waits for the support to arrive, it comes in the form of Francisco Bosch, but he couldn't uh, take the pass. And it's an opportunity missed, and uh, doesn't he know it? Opportunity missed, if not an opportunity wasted. There's a Fijian player down and in just inside the uh, Fiji 22. And in some pain. Could well be Wola Wola. Coming up, coming onto the field actually, is uh, Masaka Ndavu. Talented uh, loose forward. They're in fine form. Fijian supporters waving to the, uh, the relatives back home, probably. It's okay. 
wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Dale Tonawai, the injured player. So uh, Saka and Dabo will have to wait before he comes on. Tonawai to Saravi. So difficult to play against is Marsala Saravi, full of tricks. Good pressure being applied by uh, the Argentinians. Looking for a score to get them back into this match, and they'll get the penalty. Here's an opportunity. Carlos Orlando doesn't want to waste any time whatsoever. Does well. Oh. The Fijians won back the mandatory 10 meters. So Argentina will have another bite of the cherry. What's the decision? Okay, the Argentinians lying very, very deep. Mariano Dobal. Bosch back to Del Busto. Oh, his head, though. Oh, lack of concentration there. Forcing the passes. Midfield to Mbola Vuthu. Good work. Oh, something on here. Mbola Vuthu, he's got pace. And he's over. For Fiji's fourth try, Filimone. Mbola Vuthu played NPC rugby down there in the Waikato in uh, New Zealand. Played for the Bay of Plenty against the British Lions uh, last year. Brilliant uh, turn of pace. Filimone and Bolavuthu. Wonderful sight. In full flight. That try takes Fiji out beyond the 20 point mark. And the conversion is good as well. Fiji lead Argentina by 26 points to 12. Four minutes into the second half for the plate final. Fourteen points the difference, two converted tries. It all came about uh, as a consequence of a mistake by Argentina. It's the high kick from the restart again by uh, Fiji. You can't turn your back on this man, Santiago Gomez Cora, one of the more experienced players in the, if not the most experienced player in the Argentinian squad. Top try scorer. 133 tries to his credit in his IRB Sounds career. A slow build-up by Argentina. And, uh, some very tired players out there at the moment. They played three games yesterday. This is the third game on the second day for both these teams. Felipe Gutierrez. It was then. The grass is cut very short here at the start, Charlotte. It's, uh, Doubles up as a soccer stadium, an athletic stadium, and this weekend a rugby stadium as well. So Fiji make a substitution, and Lepani Nabuliwanga comes on for Filimone Bolavuthu. Argentina also they make a substitution on comes Leandro Moleon, one of the three debutants in this Argentinian squad. Please. Okay. Touch and hold. Engage. Bending, bending, bending. marks the spot. Sarevi considers his options. Changes the direction of the attack. And here come Fiji once again through Vola Vola into the Argentinian 22, taken by Horacio San Martin. Back. A bit okay, awkward. Okay, okay. But, uh, the ball is made available. First touch then for. The Bulliwanga. Sarevi once again on the angle comes Sarelli Nangelewuki, finds the gap. And Fiji, I would say, are home and dry. And I would say that they've also got one hand on the IRB Sevens Championship. The England squad, if they are in the stadium, well, they can only watch. But it's certainly out of their hands now. 
Ten points of difference between Fiji and uh, England coming into the Paris tournament. And, uh, Fiji would appear to have extended that lead by another four. Courtesy of a win here in the plate final against Argentina with less than a minute remaining. Fiji 31, Argentina 12. It's uh, an uphill, if not an impossible task. As Fiji make a further substitution, on comes Nasoni Rocco, dwelling seven. Rocco recalled to the squad this season again. Okay. Uh, Fiji claimed the restart initially, but it came down to a, an Argentinian player. Argentina got men over on the far side, but it's claimed by Simisi Naivo. We've seen some uh, oh, no. tremendous defending from uh, Simisi Naivo, and in particular in the uh, pool matches. So Revi. Neatly chip over the top from Lepani Nabuliwanga. The ball is out and in to touch. But uh, Jean Luc Raboyal, yes, eventually he does blow the final whistle. And Fiji are the plate winners here in Paris. They've defeated Argentina by 31 points to 12. But more significantly, they move one step closer to the IRB Series Championship, which will be decided a week from now in Twickenham. Handshakes all round them. 12 all at the break. Trophy. Lucas uh, handling is as good as the Fijians. Otherwise, there might be two pieces of silverware making its way back to Fiji, not one. So, a fanfare for Fiji. Winners of the plate competition here in Paris in 2006. Fiji step forward to receive the trophies then from uh, Monsieur Abdelaziz Bouja, president uh, of the CAR, the African Confederation of Rugby Nations and also an IRB council member and Monsieur Jacques Laurence, the vice president of the uh, French Federation. Samisi Naivo recalled it to the squad for the uh, Paris Sams. Followed by uh, Yumi Nanuku, Dale Tonawai, Laisia Satora, he's the tall gentleman in the background. Borisi Sareki, newcomer to the squad, fully deserving of his uh, selection, Dale Tonawai. Manina Baliwanga, and <laughs> finally, the maestro, the master himself, Waisale Sarevi. Been here many times before as uh, Waisale. So Fiji then received the acclaim of the crowd here at the start, Charlotte. They hailed as the uh, plate champions, having defeated Argentina by 31 points to 12. And uh, a photographer too, just to commemorate uh, the occasion. So next up, it will be the cup final between Samoa and South Africa. Could it be at last Samoa's year to round it off for the South Sea Islands? And the commentator for the final will be Nigel Starmer-Smith.